<laughs> yep. All right, notice is hereby given that the Board of Directors of the Green Mountain Water and Sanitation District of the County of Jefferson, State of Colorado will hold a regular meeting at 6 p.m. Tuesday, April 12, 2022 at 13919 West Utah Avenue, Lakewood, Colorado 80228. This meeting will be held for the purpose of conducting such business as may come before the board. This meeting is open to the public. Virtual meeting option. For those who may not be able to attend in person, the district will offer the option of participating in this meeting by a video slash conference call. To attend, please go to https colon forward slash forward slash us 6 web dot zoom dot us forward slash j forward slash eight nine five three three two two five seven seven six or call six six nine nine zero zero six eight three three and enter the meeting ID eight nine five three three two two five seven seven six. To troubleshoot issues with the connection at the time of the meeting, please follow the link https colon forward slash forward slash support dot zoom dot us forward slash hc forward slash en hyphen us forward slash sections forward slash two zero zero three zero five five nine three hyphen troubleshooting. If you still experience issues, email customer service at greenmountainwater.org and our IT staff will assist you as soon as possible. The district does not discriminate on the basis of race, age, national origin, color, creed, religion, sex, sexual orientation, or disability in the provision of services. People with disabilities needing reasonable accommodation to attend or participate in a district board meeting can call 303-985-1581 or email customer service at greenmountainwater.org for assistance. Please give notice as far in advance as possible so we can accommodate your request. I'm gonna to move to agenda item number one, call to order and declaration of a quorum. Jeff Baker, present. Karen Morgan, present. Todd Hugs, present. Alex Buckman, present. Dave Garner, present. All board members are present. I declare a quorum. We will close agenda item number one and move into uh, agenda item number two, directors matters and disclosures matters. Are there anything to disclose? Yeah. I wanted to uh, point out tonight, this is the last night uh, for Alex Plotkin and Dave Garner. And I wanna extend my thanks to both of these board members for uh, put in a lot of time and effort, especially Alex, uh, four long years. And I appreciate working with both of you. Um, I, this might possibly be my last night too. So I just wanted to thank everybody and uh, tell you how much we appreciated our time. So thank you. Sam. You're here, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. We will close agenda item number two and move on to approval of additions to if I may also extend thanks to all the staff and legal counsel in the room and our new district manager. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's quite a crew here and Jesse over there. Thank you all. And everybody else who's listening, Sam and everybody. So, Absolutely. I might as well just join in. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> when I joined the board, it was under some duress. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think I was anybody's candidate as some people seem to want to call people these days. Um, I've been around some really awesome organizations in my life, but I've never been around people who work so hard for people who don't even know what you guys do for them and your folks as you do. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, I believe you're happy knowing that the board's going to be in good hands. People in the district don't make a lot of mistakes. They'll, they'll put the right people in you go. It's awesome. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate it. And they won't be in anybody's pocket. You guys are acting like there's no possibility of a special meeting in April. There can always be. Well, you That's know. True. Don't expect to see me. <laughs> but wait, Dylan, tell them what they want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So agenda item number three is approval of additions to and deletions from the agenda. And I'm going to move because we have uh, an attorney 
uh, clocking in at 6.30. So I'm going to want to move agenda items 10 and 11, which are legal matters and executive session <clears throat> to the number six position. So I'm gonna hopefully uh, we can get through public comment and approval of minutes um, before 6.30. Does that seem reasonable? Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion? No discussion. Uh, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 We have five ayes, zero nays. The motion passes. We will be uh, changing agenda items number 10 and 11, moving them uh, in front of agenda item number six. Public comment, limit five minutes per person for past motion of the Green Mountain Water and Sanitation Board of Directors, May 11, 2021. Members of the public wishing to address the board during public comment period are asked to keep the comments civil and related to the items in the agenda or to the conduct of the district business. Members of the public wishing to address the board will be recognized by the board to maintain proper decorum. Since the Green Mountain Water and Sanitation Board values your input, we will always offer additional opportunities for the public to provide comments by using the district's email system or by phoning into our customer service in the event they do not get on during the meeting, during the period set aside for public comment. So with that being said, Jesse, I will, uh, we have nobody in the room from the public. Is there anybody online that would uh, wish to have a public statement. Doesn't appear to anyone has their hand raised. Going, going, and it's gone. I will close uh, public comment. There were no comments. And we will move to agenda item number five, approval of the minutes. Uh, I would like to, uh, we have three minutes that we need to approve. I would like to motion for the approval of February 22, 2022 special meeting minutes. So I second. We have a second. Do we have discussion? We have no discussion. Um, I'm going to vote or uh, ask for the uh, vote to approve of the minutes. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 We have five ayes, zero nays. Uh, the February 2022, 20. 22 special meeting minutes has passed. I will now motion to pass the March 8, 2022 regular meeting minutes. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Dave Garner. Uh, discussion? No discussion. Um, I'm going to call the vote. All in favor of passing the March 8, 2022 regular meeting minutes say aye. 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 We have five ayes, zero nays. The March 8, 2022 regular meeting minutes are passed. I will now make a motion to pass the March 2022, March 22, 2022 special meeting minutes. We have two of them. Hmm. Uh, that's weird, uh, but I will, they're on the agenda. We have a second. Do we have discussion? I think um, the only comment that I have on the March 22nd is that the directors are indicated as appearing by teleconference, but I think um, when we were here, I think we were here. Yeah, everyone was here. Yeah. So. I, I will certainly make that correction, no problem at all. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, no hey, problem. Thanks, Alex. Uh, all in favor of passing this, say aye. 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 We have now passed uh, the March 22, 2022 special meeting minutes, which was agenda item number C. We have two of them just to make a note in the recording. Uh, we will close out agenda item number five. Um, I think we still have time. Let me ask you, is that going to be a problem if we just keep rolling here? On the no, agenda? I, he, I talked to him earlier this afternoon. He said he'd be calling in around 620. So okay. we still got some time. More stuff done. So Jeff, we will uh, we'll cut you out. If, uh, depending on how this goes. So we're going to open up agenda item number six, district manager report. Jeff Pius has the floor. Hi, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me give us a report. So <clears throat> the outline of reports thought just basically recognitions, performance, collection, distribution, emergency preparedness, and the proposed new standard that would go into our rules and regs and the uh, 
position of staff engineers opposed to it. So if we if we look at basically staff recognition, I'm not going to read the slide, but it, it really emphasized that as I get to know the staff, I've been here about six weeks, that most of the staff either grew up here, still has family here, or has a lot of really close friends and family still here, including me. I have cousins that live in Green Mountain and close friends. So, so, so we designed our mission statement based on we care about the community and our vision is to build a, keep building a good relationship and a positive relationship with the board and the community. And the, the staff's working hard to do that. So we're establishing the mission, vision and values. And we're, you know, looking at the district is very well run for forever. It seems like it's never occurred to me yet. I worked for other districts that had you know, debt. So it's a, it's a very reliable district with a very engaged staff of people. And so if we, we go to the next slide, you know, we see the customer service is handling over 1,700 emails, incoming calls, and outgoing calls, emergency calls, just in the month of March. And, you know, everybody knows probably better anyway, if, if you call any other organization, whether, you know, be a, a utility, a phone company or anything, if, there's not a lot of quick response. So, so the, the staff really takes pride in responding and resolving any customer issue within hours. And so there's, there's always somebody to talk to, always somebody to get back with them. And you can see on the chart there that, you know, we'll, we'll make these ongoing matrices into dashboards. That's our goal is to, is every month, keep polishing up the dashboard and, and have these matrices that show um, what, what we do good and what we do improve on too, because we believe in continuous improvement too. So. So we're working a lot with, you know, we have a very nice high tech leader system that we're building out that will give us data to our customers to let them know how their water supply is going. So, so any questions on the first two slides? Um, we've had yes. some, sorry, we've had some comments in the past where people thought that they were being mischarged due to the new meters and the dog clarified the issue was one customer that was a misunderstanding they were refunded promptly. But also um, I was informed by one of the staff members that they're able to detect leaks, for example, and reach out to people and say, hey, maybe your toilet or something is leaking. And so have, have, has that been kind of a, a boon versus a curse? You think with the new metering system? Yes, so the, yeah, the new metering system going through this, um, a network, you know, so, network is able to see, you know, it's not real-time data, but it's able to see data in a 24-hour period to, to try to calculate if, if there's a leak. And we do have a lot of customers that call us and our customer service representatives are trained to say, hey, you know, it, this could be an issue with your toilet leaking. And we do have staff that's willing to, you know, get a work order and go out there and actually run some tests to see if they have any type of leaks in their sprinkler system or in their could be in their toilets. So, so you know, the, the, the technology is not quite there yet where, you know, you see real-time data on, you know, you can pull up somebody's meter. We actually met with a, a, a vendor out of Boulder that sells Metron meters that, 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 that uses, you know, computer algorithms to try to calculate if it's a dishwasher running or a shower running or a toilet running, but it's, there's, there's, you know, it's just based on statistics, but we, but our, our network is pretty solid compared to a lot of other networks, meter networks and other water districts. Thank you. Thanks. And then we, we move on to collection and distribution. So collection and distribution. So we, we are, the system is running pretty normal for this time of year. So we only in collection, sewer collection, we don't see any issues. Water distribution, we don't, we do not see any issues. And um, the, the, just real quick, I know we'll talk about a lot of this in the construction and projects, but the eight inch line is in the design stages and um, for the South Kipling, so you can see what that comes back at. And the, um, the sewer project is, we, you know, we got the cost of the bypass pumping, everything's within budget. That's the Bear Creek line that's flowing through the, um, out to the, one of the three meters that goes to Metro water recovery. And so that, that project is a partnership with Bear Creek Water and Wastewater. They approved their percentage of it. And so we have, we have that drawing over there in this 
to show the cost if we want to approve that tonight to move forward with that liner. Um, we have an action plan for that. And the, the, the big, um, the, the signs are posted at the ravines. So do not enter signs are posted at the crossings in the ravines open space. It, um, the, the red zone tank is our highest priority because we're coming up on large customer demand. So we'd like to take out the, we've been working with all the parties involved. There's a lot of parties involved in that. So we'd like to take out the liner, clean the tank and get permission from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment to put the tank back online. We would like to do that, get it back online in May, the, the middle of May. And, and in order to do that, it is, we've been working with Cablaco to try to um, share the, um, some of the work in order to take out the liner because we're, we're dealing with like 19,000 square feet of liner. So it's, it's a huge process. So, so it, it could cost, we, we do have one estimate to provide labor. It could, um, the labor co cost is $60,000 to rip out the liner. So something you would have to approve in order to go in and rip out the liner and clean it even with um, aid from Kobako and our staff. It was, it's a big job. They have to set up scaffolding go in and remove the liner, tear it apart. Well, I, I guess I'm confused if this is a warranty item and this was something that should have been addressed. Right. And now we're, well, right. we're actually past the uh, March deadline. Uh, why are we paying, uh, at this point, Dylan, I'm, I'm not comfortable with us paying 60,000. I, I believe this would fall under the purview of the contractor and their responsibility. Yeah, I agree. And, or at least a claim against the bond. For yeah, the, for they, the they need to file their claim or whatever, so. Uh, I am not okay with this. Uh, I'm, I'll listen to the rest of the board, but I will be voting. I'm with you 100%. For that. And I guess, uh, and this isn't directed at you, Jeff or, or Dylan, but it's directed at the contractors. Um, I am now really upset. You could put quotation marks <laughs> around that, um, that we are now into mid April and we don't have a red zone tank. And we've been talking about this for a long time. And we are still nowhere, and that's not on the district. Uh, this is this is on the vendor, and I'm not happy. Well, how long? Well, yeah, it's, it's been going on for months, Todd. Well, that's what I know. Like Coblanco, you think that that this would have been a semi priority for them, but apparently it's not. If if this was uh, to Jeff Tyus's opinion, if the district needed this tank, uh, which we typically do bring on in March. Uh, it goes online, I believe. Is that Jesse? Is that correct? Or... Okay. Yeah, we are, we're, we're going to Austin and Josh. They said, yeah, we need to get online April for sure. They made the latest because okay. they need, you know, customer yeah. demand. Well, we, we, we've now hit, this has been going on for a year, and now we've hit another, uh, we're coming up. Well, this is ridiculous to say the least. And I guess we need to be demanding at this point some sort of legal action. Uh, it's well, a demand now. It's not a request. Yeah. yeah. My question would be: Is Covanco slow rolling this, thinking that we're tired of litigation? I think we're we have a pretty good handle on how to litigate. I think we're getting very good at litigation. Yeah. So. I mean, they they ought to. I mean, you're the one that's talking to them. Do they have a sense that this board isn't going to tolerate this? Um, I, I have exchanged emails with Covanco, and they have just said they'd supplement the help. To remove the liner. Well, that, that's see, that's that's that's, that's that's a ridiculous statement. But see, they're making they're to me making the assumption <laughs> that it was fine, but it's not fine, and it's yeah. not working. Yeah, and it was paid for. Correct. So we need to have. Uh, I don't like to leave anything not time bound anymore. So what would be a good legal? Um, I want to put a date that I expect action. Is the May 17th, is that date um, tied to anything? Or is that just the year preference for getting it in? Yeah, that's operations preference to put the tank online based on customer demand. Okay. Then well, I, before then, certainly. Um, two weeks in April to to pay the cost. Yeah. Two, two weeks from today. Yeah. Or so if they, just a question for me, if they gave us the money to pay all, the, well, I guess you said that was a quote for someone else's labor. That's sixty thousand. Yes, exactly. That's a quote from a company that specializes in removing tank wires. <laughs> well, 
I mean, should we be asking them to do that immediately? Well, there'd be a back charge on Cablaco for this. And I, think I, I think we should send Cablaco a notice that we were going to pay for it and demand reimbursement for it under the contract. Um, and that uh, we would expect to have a, a, a confirming answer back to them by the end of this month. I think that's more than adequate. So that would require a motion. It would. Well, or could money be put in escrow? No, it, it well, just requires a motion. You have to, regardless, it requires a motion now that we're committing district funds that were not in allocated in the budget. I'm not even comfortable with committing the funds. They should just pay. I would actually kind of agree with that. But so, but you don't know that you can get them to pay in time for the work to be done. So I think you've got to get the work done and then you tell them, look, you want to litigate? We're good at that. We do, do that. Does the 60 include the expense of district staff participating in that? No, that's strictly um, outside contractors setting up scaffolding, cutting out the liner, removing everything. And then. Is so if we were to track our uh, department standards. Uh, well, the, yeah, so the operations team will here at Green Mountain would have to go in and disinfect the tank. So would we be able to charge them for that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we have an hourly charge rate for Yeah. 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 Oh, oh sorry, time. Time. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Then just another, just a general question for me. So like in our, when we are in construction projects with people, there's usually retainage. Is that something that was like, is commonly done in practices like these where we say if this tank was one, I don't remember what the liner was, one point something million, we don't hold like a hundred or 200,000 back until it's proven work. There's, I'm just asking. There should have been a 5% retainage um, prior to final payment. But was there? No, I do not believe. I think it was paid. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I think Terry would know that. Okay. So Jeff, that would be a, uh, one of our process things going forward. I know you're a really good process guy. Um, we need to make sure uh, on all, all project closeouts that we have, if we need to make a resolution or something um, in our rules and regulations or bylaws or whatever we need to do, we need to make sure that we uh, we have a proper retainage of funds it's so based on the completion. Another question for me. So would Terry have approved that or would we as the board have approved paying that money? Because I mean, I, if it was Terry, I don't think he should have that power. Yeah, I, I think it would have been, I don't think it would have been a contract. I can chime in if if you'd like. Please, please do. We we do have we did have retainage, and we typically have retainage on every every construction project. Um, we present pay applications to the board, but we never make the final decision. The board approves payment. Um, however, it is typical in the industry, and I'll welcome. Um, Dylan to chime in. At the time the tank was put back in service, the failure was discovered during the warranty period. And I'm not aware in the industry of being able to hold retainage through a one year warranty period. And Dylan, you can chime in again, but I think industry practice and, uh, the, and beyond that, the requirements are to release retainage. Once you, deem it to be acceptable and put it back in service, which was the case. It was when it was taken down for a one-year warranty inspection that they discovered it was beginning to fail. fail. Is, is that fair, Dale, Dylan? Yeah, if it, it would be customary to pay out the retainage at the time it's put into service, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we, we always have retainage. And in fact, the... Colorado uh, legislature years ago weakened the retainage law. We used to hold uh, higher retainage, 10%, and I think they have weakened that to 5%. Right, yeah, and that's what the district's bylaws are. But we kept the payment and performance bond viable, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah well, so that, well, you saw that uh, um, when the bonding company sent a... Uh, status report i think we uh, provided that to you where we said that you know the system is failing and it is not accepted during, so, during so the warranty terry, so, period so then terry my question is then 
if this has been failing, should they as the contractor under these laws, what is their responsibility to fix it? Because I mean, we haven't had tests in any timely matter that proved that it, I mean, if it was failing, then tests have not proved it to be sound. So should they not have acted under the warranty provisions to remedy this in a timely fashion, not in some slow boat to China? Um, I, I would have, I would have, sorry. Can you, yeah, just, just real, real briefly, because we need to get back onto a, onto a secondary issue. Okay. Um, yes, norm, normally that would be the case, but in this case, they took the position and they wanted to verify, it was there, was this not their fault, the failure? Was it a, you know, they were taking a position that their application method was proper and was there an environmental or other issue causing the failure? So that's, that's not unusual, a contractor, you know, will step in if they think they might not have been at fault. And that's when we recommended uh, doing testing and um, got bids for the district and uh, the district selected matter genics to go in and do testing, materials testing and try to determine cause of failure. And their failure report is they think it was an application and maybe material failure. But it's not, unfortunately in this world, it's not unusual that the contractors, if they think they have a position that they're not fully to blame, they'll try to defend that position. Didn't the district also retain an expert who was basically making the record of the environmental conditions? Correct, uh, uh, Andy Vorick, uh, a specialty inspector who does that type of work, yes. and we. We provided all of those inspection reports to the district. Yeah, so all, all the parties involved right there in this, there's their names, and I can forward all the correspondence I've had with Kobako to Dylan. Well, we probably, I guess we'll need to get back to Terry because we'll do the attorney. Yeah, we'll we'll do we'll do okay. Bill and then we can we can take this up again. That'd be great. Yeah, so, so we need to hit a hurry stop here because we've got a uh, uh, legal situation right now um, that we need to move into. So we'll put a pin in that right now, Jeff, on, on your uh, capital construction projects. Okay. And we're gonna now open up uh, agenda item number 10, which is now, I guess we're like seven point something. Um, so uh, Dylan, you have the floor. All right, thanks everybody. Um, you should all be aware from the communication that the district has been sued by former council Joe Tennant, um, as well as Mr. John Henderson. Uh, I submitted that complaint to insurance, the district and the directors individually who've been sued are covered um, by insurance council. There's um, Mr. Bill O'Connell, who's on the line here. I asked him to come and speak to the district, both generally about uh, his role and his role representing you and a little more specifically about the litigation. So uh, I'd like to turn it over to Bill. And after some introductory remarks, my recommendation is that we go into an executive session so that he can advise you more specifically. Okay. All right. Th thank you, Dylan. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, as Dylan um, just advised you, uh, I've been retained by Sedgwick, the TPA of uh, the Colorado Special District Pool to represent the district, uh, Mr. Baker, Mr. Plotkin, and Ms. Morgan uh, in this federal lawsuit that's been filed by Ms. Timmons. Um, by way of brief background, I'm a member at the Denver firm of Wells, Anderson, and Race, where I've been for 20 years. My primary practice areas at the firm are employment and civil rights defense. Uh, in the employment context, I represent both private and public employers. Uh, with respect to public employers, I've represented um, public entities throughout the state uh, in various uh, constitutional type cases, as well as cases brought under state and, and federal statutes, Title VII, uh, ADA, ADEA, uh, Fair Labor Standards Act, and the like. Uh, and I also, as I said, I represent public employers as well, or excuse me, private employers uh, when, they're, when they're being sued for violations of either state or federal statutes. 
Uh, I also have a fairly robust civil rights defense practice where I represent um, public entities along with uh, uh, individual law enforcement officers uh, when, when either the entity or the officer is being sued. Um, I've represented many special districts, as I said earlier in the state, uh, particularly in First Amendment retaliation cases. Uh, as I told Dylan, I had a case a few years back where I represented uh, North Table Mountain Water and Sanitation District in a First Amendment retaliation case brought by a former employee. Um, so, and also just by way of background as well, I've entered my appearance on behalf of the, of the three directors and the board, and I've had an associate at my firm by the name of Sogat Tapa, um, who has also entered his appearance as well. So Mr. Tapa uh, will be working with me uh, in defending the three directors and the district uh, during this litigation. That's all I had, Dylan, as far as general background. All right, and I think it'd be appropriate now to go into an executive session with the board of associates. Okay, I make a motion we move into executive session for the uh, legal advice. Second. Uh, okay, we have a second. Do we have discussion? No discussion. Call to uh, vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, we have five ayes, zero nays. Uh, the motion is passed to move into executive session. Our district attorney, Dylan Woods, will now uh, say the words to move us into executive session. This executive session is convened according to Colorado Revised Statute 246402 sub 4b for the purpose of receiving specific legal advice on the question of responding to the civil rights litigation um, filed against the district by a former counsel in his tenants. As the district's attorney, it is my opinion that the discussion of the matter announced in the motion to go into executive session constitutes a privileged attorney-client communication. I am therefore recommending that no further record be kept until the executive session has been concluded. The time is now 6.32, and I am recommending that district IT staff turn off the tape recorder at this time. The time is now 7.48, and we have turned the tape recorder back on because the attorney-client communication is finished. The executive session has been concluded. The participants in the executive session were myself, me, Dylan Woods, attorney for the district, Bill O'Connell, insurance counsel for the district, the directors, and Jeff Tyus, district manager. For the record, if any person who participated in the executive session believes that any substantial discussion of any matters not included in the motion to go into the executive session occurred during the executive session, or that any improper action occurred during the executive session in violation of the open meetings law, I would ask that you state your concerns for the record. Seeing none, um, return to the regularly scheduled agenda. You're on, Jeff. All right, thank you. So we, we left off on the red zone tank and the criticality of the red zone tank, and we were talking about the correspondence between uh, Rebound Water Sanitation District and Cabaco. Cabaco and the correspondence email uh, volunteered supplemental help, and then we proceeded to get um, labor costs from a company that specializes in tank liner removal. Um, the cost is a, a little bit above $59,000. So um, we just need the um, direction from the board to proceed with um, hiring the company at $59,000 to remove the liner and then um, look at the options of re retaining the costs, going after the cost um, with other parties and getting the tank online to meet customer demand come May. And also emergency preparedness too for anything that could happen as the temperature heats up. Fire season. Um, fire season. So, Dale and I would make the motion um, for that, but I need, I need a, I need to put some sort of an addendum in there that I don't want to be approving district funds without the expectation of recovery. Yeah. How, so, I'm sorry. Are you making a recommendation? Because how do you do that? Well, <clears throat> Terry, do you know what the bond amount was? The full contract amount. The bond amount is the full contract. Um, this portion of the work, we have a breakdown, is I want to say in the range, it's not an exact breakdown, but 
the liner, um, you know, maybe a quarter million. I, I can get that number for you. But, yeah, but it's, it's well it's well over the sixty thousand that we're talking. Oh, about. Uh, yeah, yes, it's the full con full contract amount. But of course, there was other work, and that wouldn't fall under the uh, bonding. Uh, right. the, the other work that was completed uh, properly, like the yellow tank and the concrete work and other stuff they did. So, yeah. but yes, so, well over sixty. So the dollars are there. Um, you might have a fight to get them, but. There is, there is the guarantee. There is the guarantee that the dollars are available um, after the fight to recoup the cost. Right. But I think that given the timing, you, the district needs to get the tank into service. Um, well, yeah, we need to do the best thing for the customer. And, so, and so the most do I need to add anything into the motion that states that? I'd do, it, I'd do two motions. So you move to approve the expenditure to bring the tank back online and move to recoup those costs from either the block or direct county board of performance bond. Okay, I'm in a motion to approve uh, not to exceed $60,000 for the removal of the tank liner to put the red zone tank online in the month of May, 2022. Second. We have a second by Dave Garner. Do we have discussion? I have a question. So like, um, if there are any district folks that end up working on this would something like that be included in this motion or in the recovery, recovery portion yeah, recovery. yeah okay. because the, the 60 doesn't include the, okay. the built-in district costs and staff time I, I would vote for the motion with yeah assuming the second motion will cover uh, we'll get to that okay. so okay. any further discussion all in favor of the motion say aye aye aye, aye. aye. we have five ayes zero nays and the motion do. passes, so you are authorized to uh, uh, not to exceed sixty thousand dollars for the removal of the tank liner. Who Who is that right there? Me? Sorry, you second. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to make a second motion uh, with uh, that we file a claim for the recovery of the just approved sixty thousand dollars to include any additional staffing of the Green Mountain Water and Sanitation District that all fees related to the uh, red zone tank uh, will be recovered. Do I have a second? Second. No. We have a second, Todd Hooks. Discussion? So when we say recovery of the staff, does that also include any costs we have to incur, whether that be parts, equipment, any, I mean, are we just saying labor or are we saying like if they have to go out with equipment and work or we have to rent or we have to use chemicals, whatever we have to do, is that all included in the recovery? Because I want it to be. Staff, is, uh, staff would mean if they take a truck out and we have a uh, cost per hour breakdown of what each member of this staff costs to include Dylan. And there will be a legal component to this also. Um, so I want recovery. Uh, this motion is to recover all funds related to the red zone tank um, that we are covering. At this That's time. the way I want it. I just want it could to you, be all inclusive. Could you include all direct and indirect costs in the motion? District expenses. I will withdraw the motion. Hold on. Let me withdraw the motion. All right. Go ahead. Could you also amend to say? Or... I'm going to let you say it now. But I'll make a motion <laughs> to apply to Coblanco or uh, for the bond for all, uh, recovery of all direct and indirect costs related to cleaning the tank. And returning it to service. And returning it to service. I will second that motion. <laughs> discussion, thanks. I say that we're going to vote. No further discussion. No. Uh, call the vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 We have five ayes, zero nays. The motion, the second motion is passed. So, all right, thank you. So we will pursue that. And, and Jeff, I'll work with you on that. Yeah, okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll forward you the emails. Okay, so the next um, next one, we've been working with uh, both Merrick Engineering and CDM Smith um, to, um, to start off as seven focus points that could be critical in the future if we see higher flows in new development areas. And we narrowed it down to five focus points. One of those focus points being at the Kipling in Alameda 
um, eight inch that goes into the 21 inch line, which is undesigned. So we could probably take that off to four focus points if we wanted to use this insert metering system that was proven out by Metro Water Recovery, which is a, a, a big deal because they proved out the meters work. At this time, we as a staff would like to inform the board um, that we, we don't feel like we should pursue it this spring and summer. We should wait till next spring and summer to pursue this. It's a cost of around $25,000. I would agree with that and we could bake that into the next uh, capital yes. expenditures. So I think that's a great idea. What does the rest of the board think? Yeah, as, as we progress, you're gonna see a lot of costs coming up in these other projects like the sewer lining project and other things coming up. So we want to stay on budget. So the, the next slide um, really, we wanna focus on the asset care element of the Green Mountain Water Sanitation District staff on how they do a lot of predictive and preventative maintenance tasks. This is all tracked by a software called Elements. And also we wanted to track um, um, water main breaks based on the diagnosis of either ground shifting or it, soil corrosion on the outside of the pipe. As you can see, we, you know, due to the location of Green Mountain, we get a lot of soil shifting here. And our um, average water main breaks are pretty standard compared to industry standards in the age of the system. So we don't see any regulatory issues with that and our predictive maintenance tasks are very, very tracked very well through the work order system. So the only thing I'd like to see is, uh, I don't consider that preventative maintenance. I like the word uh, predictive. I think you're starting to move into a predictive level. Yes. And preventative is just time-based, and I think you guys are taking the right steps. You're starting to look at condition-based maintenance, which is smart. Let's, let's, we will make that correction. Predictive maintenance, no problem. I think it's a correction. So. Improvement, yes, continuous improvement. <laughs> okay, then the special task, um, there was, go next slide. So the 811 locates is a, um, there's a lot of, um, things going underground where we need gas lines and a lot of fiber to the home. So whenever they run fiber to homes, we have to go out there and locate. So, so here today we've done 730 locates. The staff, especially Adam works very hard doing that. So thank you for all the great work on that. And then sewer cleaning, that's constant. So that's just showing the task with the sewer cleaning and the cell points, that's an ongoing thing we report to the board because the seller endpoints are a nice thing to show our customers that we're able to see actual water usage along. You know, it's, it's also approved by Denver Water to show, you know, where our water is going, especially with um, things coming up where we could have another, like last summer was the third hottest summer on record. So. Can, I, can I ask a question since I'm new? So when you say sewer cleaning tasks, do we just like generally have a system of going through all the lines everywhere and like basically rotor rooting all of our infrastructure. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. So it elements tracks on these GIS maps, like one guide us where the software will track which lines have been cleaned and also show which lines have to be cleaned more often. So the, the number of tasks are when they go out with the the jetter, the large trucks in, in the camera, the camera, the line in, jet the line, in back the line. So, so yes, it's a task per day going out there and tracked on a map. Okay. Which is critical because it identifies, it, it's a quick and easy way to actually see and visually see things over and over again. Okay. And then, then the, the software is able to map it out. GI, you know, it's GIS software, right. global information systems. Good question. So uh, yeah, going back to seller endpoints, so that's ongoing. And as you well know, that it's correct. It's connected to a lot of the Verizon network and a lot of the network since we do live in this foothill area is, is critical to get connections. So the staff is working hard to make sure it's connected. So we have good customer service where we download the data. Um, just a side note, a lot of my good friends live in the district. One of my, I went to lunch with one of them, he pulled up his phone and showed me how he tracks his water usage on his phone. I thought well, that, that's a big deal because a lot of districts I work for did not have that. <laughs> so good, good job bringing out staff. Any questions on that? Okay, we could go to the, the big ones, emergency preparedness, because we do, we do see a lot of this. And so we, we do have, you know, quickly under, um, the American Water Infrastructure Act, you had to come up with an emergency response plan along with the risk 
the resilience assessment plan, which we work with Merrick to complete. So we, we do follow those procedures and we do polish those procedures up. So we do have fire watch, we discuss with the staff, tracks it, and we do have backup critical parts. We do have 27, 24 seven contact directly with the Denver water people. A lot of those staff are good friends with the Denver water supply pumping. And so we do have uh, police and fire contacts and our water storage is pretty redundant because we have um, many of, more series of tanks than most districts. Most districts will just have one or two tanks. And so you see, we, we do have a series of tanks up to 10, 11 tanks that we can pull from the whole 13.5 million gallons of water. And most of the time our tanks are not filled up because of chlorine. So we can actually fill them with contact with Denver. So if we go to the next slide, it really shows the large question is, the red zone tank included in that calculation or is that an addition? Well, it's including that one, okay. including for things like that. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so you can see that if you drive just down um, south of here, you run into a 10 million gallon tank that is owned by Denver Water. And if you drive down Jewel towards Wadsworth on the south side is a huge hill that's a 50 million gallon tank. So we do have close access to a lot of Denver Water tank in that 600 million gallons, that's 600 million gallons of day treatment capacity based on the three treatment plants that Denver has. And they're backed up by large 700,000 acre feet of reservoir. Just to give you an idea of how big 700,000 feet, the largest reservoir in Colorado is Blue Mesa over 800,000 feet. So they have a lot of reservoir capacity. So we're, we're, we're actually in a good position being backed up by Denver Water um, Infrastructure System um, backing us up and they do have the capability of pumping into 80% of our, well, mainly the red zone area of our distribution system in case something happened to our pump station. So, so we do have a lot of redundant uh, systems. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. So you can probably read through this one at your own. I won't read it, but this is, this is how we, we came up to make the best sense of the new standard, it flows nicely, and it does show in the bottom there that what we kind of want, we're leading to in our last meeting about um, working with developers to help share that cost if we see, just like we're doing on Kipling and Alameda, if we see cost increasing on the capacity. So you see that the capacity calculation is uh, engineer standard on, on that based, based on 0.7, D over D, 70%. So, and then sharing that cost, if we, you know, it kind of gives the authority to the board and the developers to say, hey, if you guys want to tie into this line, you know, we'll, we'll use the tools to figure out, okay, it's out of capacity. So we have to do something with that. Jeff, great job. It, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of staff work. Right? You know, Everybody, great job. A lot of staff. That's, I mean, just how quickly this can turn around. Great job. Thank you, thank you for your help too. So the next slide, the, the engineer position is posted and it's just like we talked about. So we did do the research and we do have it out there to look at other districts if they want to share an engineer. Um, I, I do have a lot of close, close friends that are working in, in um, you know, water, wastewater, engineering and ask them to put it forward. But it's, it's posted on a, a American Water Association, Indeed and Green Mountain. So it is posted as, uh, you, if anybody wants to see the, the job description, you just go to our website and you'll see it. It'll be ongoing. Have we had any hits so far? We've had two hits, but their, their resumes do not match the job, the job application. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a competitive field right now because all the infrastructure build up. But that, that concludes that presentation. So we can... Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All right, we'll move on to uh, the agenda item capital and construction projects. Uh, subset A, red zone tank. Okay, so we talked about the red zone tank and we're working with Terry and all the parties involved, um, like we talked about. So we'll presume the, just what the board um, approved and we'll pass on all the information to Dylan. And also, um, Kablaka wanted to run a, another test right before we put it online also, and I'll forward that to Dylan. And I could CC you too, Jeff, if you want. 
Uh, make sure Director Morgan CC. And, okay, Director Morgan. Thank um, you. Thank you. And so moving to the Kipling Street um, sewer line upgrade. That's this document right here. So the wording is correct now. Dylan, we changed the wording on it. You know, what Bill agreed on, so we can sign off on that. If you want. We have to make a motion for that. I think we've made a motion on that. Uh, we just had to change the wording. Yeah, I think we approved it last time. I just want to make sure it's up to everyone's thing, and then I'll sign this. Yeah. Uh, I just want to make sure everyone's good with it prior to my signature. Yeah, I saw the digitals. And that's in the design stages with our district engineer. And after it goes to the design stages, it will go to the approved standard operating procedure bidding process to follow all the rules. Director Morgan, you're good with everything that was on here? I know you had some questions on that. No, I was good with everything that was on there, but I guess I. Maybe my, my memory is probably just going. Then did we decide that we were going to do this and that was going to be bumped up and that was going to be on the agenda for on the schedule to do immediately and get this bid out and do? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're still going to meet with the developer about this cost sharing agreement. Yeah. Okay. And was there any residual concern about the drainage at the rear? Yeah, we were concerned about it. Drainage issues at the property. I I am very concerned about the drainage issues. I don't know that there's anything we can do about it though. But is that in our well, well doesn't that the civil engineer have to make it so that it is acceptable? Stormwater's liquid. We yeah, yeah, that's yeah, liquid. Yeah, yeah. Stormwater falls under liquid. Right. Should be in our sanitary. If it goes into our sanitary, it becomes our problem. And it shouldn't be happening. Yeah, you it was as a result of poor uh, design. You're going to have an issue. Yeah, I just think because of that, um, one of the residents' concerns about that, you had at least bring that to Lakewood's attention formally as an act. There's a concern of the board that we don't want to having that water dumped into our system. Does that need to be a vote, Dylan, where we'll just have you write three sentences or something? Liquid, or how should that be handled? I don't know if I I got a call from a, a resident who said he apparently has been in long time contact with the district about this about with this district about the uh, stormwater there at that property and apparently it is not being addressed in this development but the district gets calls all the time because I think there's a water main break uh, and it's not it's just that but it sounds like it's, it's been. Yeah, I can imagine it's frustrating to call the water and sanitation district about the stormwater issue. Right. And, and it never gets fixed. It never gets fixed. Yeah. So, um, so it was a good neighbor policy. Could we send a, a, a maybe a letter uh, and with requesting receipt from City of Lakewood? Storm sewer. There's no reason we can't speak to the developer about that issue if they have concerns because, you know, my effective value of property. Could it could jam up there, <laughs> but that's again that's like so. What do we do as a district to just send the email? It's just a good yeah. it's just a good neighbor thing. It's been made email. aware by residents of concern, okay. yeah. and and we would we would as a district be concerned that it not that water not contaminate our system. Okay, and so yeah, contaminate in a broad sense. Thank you. It might be helpful if anybody remembers here the district. He said they. The people know me there that they're always i'm always calling they know they know my name um and i can forward you that email if, if you would like a copy of it but um to say that it's been an outstanding help for the district yes um, i will do that so i will um talk to the staff find out the customer and politely email lakewood saying we're getting calls on stormwater issues um just for your information, let us know if we can support you. Do you remember his name? Um, could you let me know? Because I, I was going to drive by there tomorrow. Okay. It's on my list of things to do. I will get it to you. Okay. Um, 
But thank you for remember offering solutions for that. All right, thank you, Terry, for looking at the design stages on that line. And so, ten seven hundred Expo signed off on. Okay, just sorry, but Terry Dave Garner, um, have, are you aware of the drainage issues that have been brought to our attention over there? Not fully aware. I have heard a little bit about, you know, I think there's a ditch that runs by that property, if I recall. And it's on the backside. Yeah, on the backside, and it's very common when the ditches start running, you know, to get groundwater effect. So um, I'm somewhat aware, I don't know the details, because again, that's under the purview of the city of Lakewood, the storm sewers. I will comment that it's very important I concur completely because infiltration inflow is a big deal, but it's also the reality that sewers run deep and they run down by the river to the treatment plant and they are commonly in groundwater. It's, it's as common as dirt. So what's very important is the testing, the inspection installation and testing of the sanitary sewer installation in the manholes so that they, the infiltration, the groundwater can't come into them because again it's it's every day on sewers here and there they're in groundwater during wet season that's just the nature of the beast they're deep and treatment plants are always down by the river where they discharge that's where the sewers run so it's a reality of life and we try to take care of it adequately in design inspection and etc I'm just curious if, you, if you'd heard about this particular one before. Mm -hmm. I guess I shouldn't presume to think that Lakewood would have one opinion or another about that problem. Well, they, they signed on for this nice little tax bump they give, but they haven't really embraced the whole concept of due diligence and responsibility around that. That tax provide the service. Yeah, they they the service. Of it. yeah, it does keep going up, and there's you know, so it's in their world. It's good, a good thing to point out for the city, I think, just to, for being good neighbors. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <clears throat> we'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry, for your help on that. And so on the ravine, we talked about that a little bit. We put up the signs. The, the signs are all posted. We haven't had uh, any calls, the, the signs are um, danger, keep out the common black, red and white sign with a person walking with a line through it in case there's some issue of reading it. So they are all posted. And we would, um, as a staff, we talked about if we could read the signs up there like that and then um, see, if we, if we don't want to do any more steps this year, maybe do some more planning this year to see what we want to do next year. I know there's some money in the budget for capital for that, but um, I don't know what the next step would be on the crossings for the open space. One question is, 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 that, is that all of those signs that I thought we had discussed? And maybe that was before you were on Jeff with putting a lot of a lot more language number the, the legal reason why we're closing all that. you have to have a citation on there like if there's a lawsuit that we stated the ordinance or whatever our laws are that that um we had a discussion about whether lake would have any specific requirements for the signage and as far as I'm aware they don't and also as far as i'm aware there's no your obligations and your liabilities are independent of what the signage says. You, um, I, I thought it was just a public notice. This is why we're doing it. It wasn't like, because they're not all danger options. I thought it was, you know. The reason it's dangerous, I keep saying this, they're not bridges. They're not a bridge. So, you know, if you're walking on it or playing or whatever, you don't belong on it. Right. Quit well, the, lang the fact that there's language out there that it describes it as a bridge, if there was some sort of a, somebody gets hurt or something happens, I, I, it's just a liability for the district. These are not bridges, period. Right. Do we know if the current signs are effective? 
And the whole oh, yeah. current weather is as effective as the sun is. <laughs> Safe, safe for the past couple of weeks. But we'll have to go take a look at because there's signs in it, so it's barricade right now. Is that correct? Just signs. Yeah, we're still the, we're still working there. Yeah, the barricade barricades are being um, priced. Okay. It was the last I saw. Ooh, install motion, activate the cameras. <laughs> Get some game cameras up. There you go. Yeah. I did email the signs to Lake Wood, and they didn't have any comments on it. So okay, good. good. And then, to did you um, for a next step? You had mentioned at some point to look at at grants for burying those lines. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm attending a seminar to SDA on grants on May 10th. So, okay. It seems that that I thought was a good idea to maybe look at that as a next step, and before we. We were looking at rerouting those that at least the middle one um but that would be the other two but if there's grant money available for varying that would be a more attractive just reminded me wasn't mr kropkowski we get some grants or how to get some grants no? well and jeff jeff's kind of picked up that thing yeah, yeah. there's grant money out there yeah that's exactly. aware of it uh, yeah. cdpg has grant money also Sure, that would be an engineering marvel for that deep ravine. But if it could be done, that would be great. Might have to put a lift station in there. Yeah, exactly. Put a lift station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. lift station. <laughs> All right, so we'll pursue that. We'll look at the grants and then we'll keep talking about possibly if you want to pursue any other type of bear. I know Terry's done some research on barricades too. If you want to pursue that, or, you know, the next steps. Well, Dylan, as far as you know, is the city attorney happy with this? Yeah, he, it, it dropped below attorneys to the staff level. So Wonderful. He, he stopped talking to me when staff started talking to each other, or Mr. Mary started talking to him. Um, so okay. You, okay, good. But yes, barricades were still on the list. Is that? Your understanding? Oh, yeah, they're being, they're, they're, yeah, there's there's capital money for the next step. And along with that, though, is anybody tracking the issue of drainage around that structure? So that's going to be um, Lakewood's not going to do anything about drainage until the district decides whether it's removing or um, removing or taking construction. Okay, so, so we'll pursue that. Let's keep talking about it. The next one is the sewer lining project. So we have an action plan for the sewer lining project that includes working with America West, Terry, and the staff. Everybody's involved. We have a, a plan on the bypass pumping is included in the cost. So, so it meets the budget. So the Bear Creek approved their percentage of the bypass pumping and the uh, our cost our cost for this project fits within the capital is nine hundred eleven thousand four hundred eighty million dollars our our capital is one million fifty thousand three hundred thirty five dollars so we're within budget of this project so if you want to pursue this this is a critical line that flows to the Metro Water Recovery Metering Station and Terry and the staff all agree that this has to be lined. It's critical along with the Bear Creek Water and Sanitation District staff, which Terry, they approved that, right? Um, I talked to Jan um, this afternoon, you know, the uh, district manager for Bear Creek and she, and I talked to their engineer and they were both planning to proceed and looking forward to the project because this, you know, back to that uh, groundwater issue, this, a lot of this is old clay pipe and that was notorious for joints that would leak and groundwater would come into. So Bear Creek is very much on board because they see this as helping infiltration 
because the sewer runs down just parallel to Bear Creek and crosses Bear Creek before it goes to the Metro Interceptor. So, yeah. So I'm sorry, this was the one that was on the, the original budget yes. for the year. Yeah. Yes, it's approved, yeah, it's in the original, they, we had to combine the water and sewer lining ones together because the costs increased dramatically on both. So we combined those costs and so that $1,050,000 covers the cost on this project, which will, if you sign it, we'll kick it off and complete it. Everything goes right, we'll complete it for sure by the end of the year. Or is that here? This is right here, sir. So we've already approved the 2022 budget. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and sign this. Well, is that a motion to approve this specific award because of the an amendment? Say that again. Do we need to motion to approve that specific award? No, because okay. it's already in the budget. It's already we, in the budget. We sure. approved uh, the, with the budget being approved with those capital expenditures. We already motioned that correctly, Dylan. Yeah, he's just giving us a heads up on current status and what's going on with. Right, the, the funds already been allocated. Back and there's no separate contract to do. There's nothing, no delta to that. That probably, if there was, we would have to approve that. But we already approved it. And. And Dylan and I modified the award language to reflect that we had negotiated these changes in the notice of award. So, and that was, I think that was taken up at the March regular meeting. I, yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, great. Thank you for that. And so the last one is just, um, this is also approved in the capital budget, the design force main pipe for the Tamarisk lift station. So we don't need to sign anything on that. It's just, um, Terry's obligated to move forward on that. Thank you, Terry, for moving forward on that. So it will go to design. And that's part of the capital budget also. Okay. That wraps up capital and construction projects. Terry, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Moving into uh, financial matters, Todd, I'm going to let you. Good night. I actually, so on the, I'll make a motion to, to approve the March 2022 and April 2022 daily, monthly operating expense and capital expenditures. I will second. Discussion? Our discussion, call the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 We have five ayes, zero nays. Motion passed. Budget is passed. I would also like to make a motion that the March 22 unaudited financial investment report uh, be accepted. Okay, I will second that motion. Any discussion? No further discussion. Call the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Dave. Third five, motion. Five eyes. Um, the motion passes. I do agree with the auditor, and I'd like to make the motion that we increase our capital policy minimum from one thousand to five thousand dollars, so that anything under five thousand is just expense. We won't put it on the books to be depreciable unless it's five thousand dollars or greater. I will second that motion. Discussion. No further discussion. Call the vote. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Scott. I, I, we have five eyes. I'm still reading. Zero nays. The motion <laughs> passes. <laughs> so I don't think we don't need to update the bank centers until we have new directors, do we? That's what Doug said. Too. Doug said the exact same thing. Today. Yeah, hold off on yeah. that. <laughs> so that uh, and the investment options, um, basically, Doug had sent me. What the auditors had showed me, it's no different than what the C Corps is. They personally, they're poor at best for the amount of money we have in them. Yep. But at least the bright note is those ones had moved up from like 0.1 to 0.4%. So that's great. I mean, we've quadrupled our earnings in a month. That's great. Now, instead of earning $19 a year, we're going to earn, you know, 80. 
80 on 20 million dollars. <laughs> well, I actually did not. So it, I'm still like very disappointed and I'm just not used to having this much money doing nothing. Just sitting there. Yeah, this much money doing nothing. It just like, it truly makes me sad when I think of how much money could be used for and how much it could make for the district. And probably with not even much risk. I mean, like this is like no risk. I mean, we could do it with like, 99.9% .9 risk free and make, oh my gosh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sad. Well, that Barnett is to that point, at least some of the capital improvements probably could be stepped up. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you even just had 1% on $20 million, you know, oh moly, nice. That's what I'm basing my retirement projections on. Well, if you have that much in the bank money, you're a better investor than I. So, Jeff, you know, maybe at some point in this uh, fiscal year, um, we need to maybe revisit and see how we're doing with our capital expenditures. And based on that, with current dollars being probably utilized as a better investment and seeing how the uh, spend downs going, maybe we evaluate uh, additional capital expenditures in 2022. And we set a future date. I don't know what makes sense because I'm not, I'm just not that guy. So does anyone have any opinions around here? Well, well I mean, as our money, as our money becomes worth a lot less, it will. I mean, to me, kind of the sad thing is now I wasn't here, but it would have been great if we had started capital improvements four or five years ago at a lot cheaper cost. But now, I mean. They're going to, I mean, it almost like at some point it's going to discourage the pr probably predictive another man. I mean, if it gets so costly and our money's worth so little, it's obviously. Well, inflation is taken off. We all know that. So when we look at that, what they call a death cross in the community where you're, you're sure we've already crossed that. So maybe we need to put a date in time. Uh, what what would be a good month? We look at this in June. <laughs> when does when our actual budget start? It's already started. I mean, you, can, you can amend it at any time. Well, I understand, but I mean, what was like the is it like October October? It's one, one 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 to one one. So this is a great discussion because remember when we were talking about potentially laying out a longer term agenda that we could attend to, and now all that went to shit. So. This is a great discussion to have, I think, to put things on the calendar for, I mean, tentatively maybe, but still. Yeah, I, I, I'd go for June. If yeah, I say push it years, back. Right. The, the, the well, June, June would give, I think, Jeff and the staff yeah. enough time that if we had to go out to bid and get it inside of the envelope of when billing has to be completed for this year, I think that gives you enough time, doesn't it? Yeah, so we, we could come up with a ideas on capital improvement projects with all staff input and follow the standard procedure for our for bidding. So I think it would be with the, the mindset of what's probably, what projects would be out there that inflation is gonna start really, oh, no. it's gonna be cheaper today than next week. So does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think we should almost look at the budget every six months. I mean, I understand we need to minimum approve it annually, but I think it would be great to have more. To me, just to have that much capital sitting out there, not working for us, not improving our system, not, it makes no sense to me because we're not, if we were earning hundreds of thousands of dollars on it, I'd probably look at it differently, but we're not. Yeah, when you got 60 year old clay out there, it's kind of hard to justify right. $20 million sitting around doing nothing. Right. Yeah. I agree with you. So do we need to, uh, Jeff, why don't we put that on a six month? Do we need a motion or resolution on that? Or no, we just put it on the yeah. agenda. Although um, you'll want to make sure that if you do amend the budget, you get the um, publication in advance of it. 30 days. Yeah. We just have to give that to the public. Right. That's why we're well, saying you, if you we do it in June, we come out in July, the next board meeting in July. Um, 
then it would be August. So we may have to do one in June anyway if we have to change it for the engineer position. Since sure. that would need to be we can't afford an engineer now. Okay. <laughs> she did like really I hate you, I hate you, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just kidding. You got another year. No, that's a good idea. I've been saying we should be are behind on our capital. We should be doing that. That's great. Yeah, that's a great good push. point. I mean, yeah, one hundred twenty thousand for an engineer. Well, gosh, what are we saving the money for? Good point. Somebody could well, be working on these other future projects. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally true. But we also have to keep in mind we still have that hanging question of the races that we have not approved. For staff to. Uh, yeah, given the, the rate of inflation, I think we're in a pretty tough position. Okay, can we close out uh, financial matters? Yes. All right, uh, we're going to go into director's matters, and uh, we have district staff engineer, which we just started talking about. Or is whoever wants to talk about it? I think we were sure. Okay. Good. Uh, um, then I, I was just going to suggest you might post it to the SDA career and class plans. I will. I think uh, we'll the district manager position is posted there. Yeah, sure. Okay. The uh, director's matters uh, subset B Denver water agreement. I don't know if that, that was Karen brought that in. That was I suggested last time that maybe we get a committee to talk to Denver Water about uh, options on on our contract and um, and guaranteeing water and and different things that we'll get some just a, a brainstorming committee for me to talk to them. Um, I did actually forget to look at the bylaws for. I don't think there's a a way to uh, that have spelled out how to set an outside public committee to. But um, if we want to open that up to other people, let that go. Um, we have that in the body. We can do. We can, you can build do up. Up. Can I be? Yeah. Can I be negative, Nancy? Sure. <laughs> My guess is Denver Water would never guarantee us water. Sure. They've got an entire metro area to provide water to, and why they would want to guarantee us water and not everyone else, I don't know. I'm, I'm not saying that to. Poo poo. I, I mean, I think your idea is very safe. I think it is very logical for us to protect ourselves. I think the viability of it is about none. That's, that's very possible. I think there, there, it just is a discussion point if we can have some people who are interested that way. I think there are, there are things that we in Lakewood with this limited growth thing that can offer. Um, and maybe that's just part of it, if you can say we're going to to stop here, whereas, you know, Aurora is not saying that. Um, if you can even bump up from a tier four to a tier three, that would be a win, I don't know. But you're, you're right, it's a, it's a, it's long odds. I think it's an uphill battle. It is. I do, but. Every interaction I've ever had with Denver Water, they have been perfectly willing to listen to us and, not and turn us away. Yeah. yeah. That would I be my guess. guess. Very polite. The thing is, I think, was driving some of this, as we've said this over and over again, like people really need to look at that agreement, and the levels of how screwed you are. And level five isn't pretty. And we're not too far above well, that. So one of the constituents, uh, Amara, there was something with, uh, I don't know if there's some funding available, Jeff, where we could do some load shedding water-wise with, I think there was some, if you go to the artificial grass or something like that where you get away from lawns and you go to the astroturf type thing and i thought she had a good point and i think uh if there's anything we could look into where you know people that might be interested in astroturf or you know um alternatives to load shedding of our water um might be a good another uh, proactive contingency um, that if we get moved into this tier five or whatever just some things that uh I mean, we are, Denver Water is going to tell us what they're going to tell us, right? They're, I mean, they're, well, they're in the driver's seat. They are absolutely in the driver's seat. Yeah. Just what, can, what can we do? But right uh, now, they're, they're, what their message is, is that you can grow forever and you can have all the water forever and there's no limits on this ever. And then we just had this discussion on the tap. So, I mean, if we have this discussion and we get another 
shut down, which we can expect, but if we can do better documentation of the reasons and all of the things that we tried and make the people aware of, look, we tried this, so don't count on unlimited growth. You can't just do this forever. And all of these pictures of, you know, the happy high-rise apartments versus your, your sickly lawn or is just fantasy because you're not going to be able to water those people either. You know, it's just... Well, I would assume a high-rise apartment probably uses way more water than if someone actually had a house on that lot. Well, it's true because there's unlimited water. It's like when you go to a hotel, people take 80 minute hot showers versus their home. Yeah. So all of that aside, as I mentioned at the start of the meeting, I think we were then just, they already 25% down in their electricity production and they're just a few meters away from a critical level where I think they still have to start shutting down. Yeah, but that's what I was going to say. Yeah, we don't care about that, right? Just has nothing to do with... This, this won't change until the 2023 when called out a river compact <laughs> and the Arkansas River and well, all this settles out in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. not well, could we right. do a could we do a committee and, and have the discussion and 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 bring it up to them? I mean, if it's if it's a waste of time, it's a waste of time. But would you want to run this committee? I want him to run this committee. Well, why not? All in favor of ballot, say aye. 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 <laughs> Yay, motion carry. You're going to be a free outside consultant. <laughs> I, I could forward you the information. We get a lot of information from Denver Water because we have you know contact with them every day. And they just publicize everything Alex is talking about, you know, because in, in their world, they're living off of the Rocky Mountain snowpack, just that feeds Lake Powell, that feeds Lake Mead, that eventually. Um, feeds Lake Havasu, so there's a lot. There's a lot of working parts with the Colorado River Pact as we talk about. That includes the Sierra Nevada Mountains. That you know, when their snow melt melts, it ends up in San Francisco Bay and doesn't make it to Southern California, which is directly related to everything we're doing here in Colorado to save water. So I can afford you all that, all those graphs and everything if you want them. I just got them yesterday from Denver Water. So I would. I'm going to make a motion to uh, appoint Alex Blockham um, as a uh, water conservation committee. Yeah, do I have a second? Second. We have a second discussion. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where is this going again? You can talk about it now. <laughs> so what does this entail? Oh, this is what on. you've been talking about for four years. It's now in the yeah. <laughs> So I can do this for the remaining three weeks that I'm here. Or well, what? then you'll become a constituent, and then you'll still be on the committee. Oh, boy. Yeah. So I'll I'll, I'll volunteer to be no. the uh, if you if you need an official director email. No, to, to help go with that. Right. Yeah, you can do it. And I I I further that by saying if there's anybody else who wants to apply to be on a committee. Uh, Constituents. I'm for a committee we'll free talk, America. Talk to uh, Alice. <laughs> there you go. Are you and Todd or Yeah. What would you think of inviting? If we can find there. There is a um, new ward for district planning committee person. I don't know who it is. Oh no. 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 He, that would not line up at this current time, trust me. Okay. You're stepping on a landmine right there. Yeah. That is somebody that wants to see unbridled growth. So that wouldn't probably line up. Well, I mean, I, well, education. I mean, yeah. if, if that if the question is asked, do we have water to support unbridled growth, or what are they going to tell us? Is there water? Sure. Yes, they will. Okay, let's have that in writing. Yeah, they won't guarantee it. We talked about that with their contract. Well, can you we put did. that in terms of the well, contract? And they will not. So, what's the term of the contract? When's it? When's it renegotiated? It's not. It goes. I don't think that. I don't think there's an end. Is it perpetuity? Yeah. yeah, and it just says they took out the number of taps, mm -hmm. and and they just said taps as needed. And so then we said, well, does that mean as many as we want? Yeah. That was the ceiling on the master meter agreement. And then Director right. Morgan looked into that and found out we were underwater like 6,000 taps or something like that. And they're like, nah, that's unlimited. Because she brought that point up and they're like, no, it's unlimited. Yeah. But so, yeah. 
Yeah, they won't write that in there. If there's a limit on how much that the pipe will take. Yeah, there's but, a mechanical limit, but there's it, theoretical unlimited water. Theoretical unlimited water, but they will put those words in writing. Yeah. But that's what they have said to us. So I don't know how you figure that one out. But that's what I want to you, you know, fine. If you're going to guarantee unlimited or not, and we're happy to put a limit on it. And then the planning like people can do it. That <laughs> seems <laughs> rational to me. You can't make one promise in writing and one promise in <laughs> you know, verbally. I think that's. Sure, you can. Well, so we'll You're going to be on the committee. What's the purpose of this? <laughs> what's, the, what's the mission of this committee? Yeah, I was going to say, what's the terms and conditions then? Where you, I mean, okay, so there's CBD. I mean, I, guess I think we know. just, I think we need to look at uh, developing um, alternatives in the event of maybe just come up with contingencies. Like we have this thing where if you want to do load shedding, people don't want lawns anymore. And I think that there are um, funds or rebate type things like an Excel rebate where you, if you remove your lawn or a portion, certain percentage of it and put in AstroTurf, you know, you, you, well, maybe it moves you to a different tier rate or something. I don't know what that looks like, but um, maybe that's what we look at. <clears throat> and then if we have contingencies for hitting these different um, crisis levels with water, that we at least make the public aware of it. That, you know, if Denver Water says this, this is what your day looks like tomorrow. So just in very loose terms, as we talked about at last meeting too, I mean, <clears throat> I think it actually would be very useful for the public as well for the district's website to actually have some of these dashboards and information going out to the public as well. So that would be a yeah subset on the, we yeah. could do that on our website if you're interested and in, uh, you know, just because you've got look after the Marshall fire, you have concerns around that. What does all this look like? And I think we, we post the situational things that we're in, you know, where things can change, right? The variables with the district, Denver Water tells us we go to this level. This is what your day looks like. Okay. We, we, with when we talked about the Marshall Fire, and you just had Jeff talking about we have thirteen point five or ten point five million gallons in tanks. Mm -hmm. um, what? It's thirteen point five with the original tank. Yeah. So we we have that. I mean, unlike the people in the Marshall Fire, we do have uh, quite a bit of water uh, that we could possibly put into. Uh, they have to pump, right? And they would have to pump. So, anyway, that's what that kind of stuff. I mean, is that kind of build a little bit of a framework around that? And I can write some stuff down and send it to the to directory. If that's and then go from there. I guess. There you go. Well, yeah, let's. We can just talk online what the possibilities <laughs> are. If we can get. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Well, we had a motion. We had a second. We had discussion. Also, what would that entail as far as access to any of the district documents going forward since I would no longer be a red end party? But you're on a committee, and then Director Morgan said she would still you know, um, cross any lines. Point there, that. No. So a committee would then, you know, work within the, the bounds that we can uh, uh, work with uh, on a committee level. Then don't misuse confidential district information. We'll see you. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. As I was informed, yes. <laughs> I look on his <laughs> No, it's just the guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just thought that was funny given our current situation. <laughs> Notice it's like, it's like the, you know, the. Well, that was the thing. Good job. Bad job. <laughs> The joke was offered by a person not being personally sued. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Your day's coming. All right. Okay. Strike that from the record. <laughs> all right. I'm going to close yeah, that out. Right. No, wait, we have to have a vote. So all in favor of the motion for the committee, say aye. 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 We have the motion. I will abstain on this one. Is that... We have uh, four ayes. One uh, abstention. Director Plotkin has abstained. First time in his career. No, no. <laughs> All right, we're now under district lobbyist, which I think that is also yours, Director Morgan. That's mine. I did um, some preliminary research on this. 
What I have found is that I'm having a hard time finding a middle guy. I find the big people who, this is, seems dumb in this day and age, but if you are big enough to have a website, we probably can't afford you. And then there's a lot of the little people who you find through word of mouth and they have a phone number and you just contact them like that. Um, so anywhere I can find like the neutral kind of website advertising type stuff, I, I'm having a hard time with that because they're all real huge firms. Um, I have uh, some contact with, with little guys, but I have not gone and talked to any of them without, I got a couple phone numbers that, of people that are open. Is that something I can follow up with at that point where, what do I do with that? Since I'm doing this one-on-one, -on -one, can I interview them? Do I bring them in? What would I, what, what would be a good course of action? I have no idea. I don't want to get into a, a situation where I'm bringing in a Working sole recommendation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're, you're gathering data. Okay. So you're not creating you're, funds, right? You're not. You're not no, I'm not doing anything. anything. I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody? Um, do you have a preference? I my. Since this is something new to us, all of these little guys would it be new to the special district area, and they'd have to, you know, come up to speed on that. But I, I would rather do that than have a big, you know. Well, I'm trying to understand what the need. So for this would be for today. like doing. That Metro District One is still gone. I don't. I didn't catch the last update, so I don't know about the um, the bill where you could the the city could take over your special district. Those kind of the special district association monitors like twenty bills. So those are all things that they have a they they don't take position on all of them, but they are monitoring all of them on our behalf. So I would I was thinking that was somebody who could keep an eye on them on our specific behalf, because I think some of those were going contrary to what the special district was doing. They were support, they were against the Metro District uh, legislation. They were supporting this um, being able to consolidate by the by the Lake would want to take us over. And I don't know if that would be in our best interest. Well, that's where, if we needed to, we'd probably have to talk to the other water and sand districts in Lakewood and look as a maybe a consolidated lobbying effort because if that's their concern, I don't know if we could stand that alone. I don't know if we could stand up to Lakewood alone on that. I well, it's not, it's not, it's not standing up to Lakewood. This is this is all at the state level, so it's just registering. Well, and that's what the SDA does, right? Well, yes, but do you want that? That's what I mean. I, I hear what are, you're saying. They are not doing, I don't know if they're representing, they're not representing what I think is in our best interest. Well, today, what is our benefit today? All. To have somebody speak on our behalf if we need to. So they would just be, you can have them monitor you can have them go and talk and lobby on on your behalf. So I guess with, so me like I always think money wise. So if I'm paying this money today, yes. How am I winning? Like if I'm hiring ABC, you know, lobbyists, mm -hmm. and I'm giving them three thousand dollars a month, I'm making this up. Right. How are we? What What does this district benefit from that? I think that's. We are paying them to same reason why you're sitting on this board. Somebody elected you to do it for free and come make the laws and make things, make the policies here. Right. So there's not, I can't point to a single thing today that you are doing that is giving them money. It's, but so, so I guess, so what I, well, let me rephrase my question. I can answer your question directly. Please. It's the only way you'll get to know what individual representatives and senators at state level think, if they think at all, about legislation that would affect the board. Otherwise, you will have no clue what they're thinking. Okay, so where does that benefit us today? It allows you to have a longer term strategy for how you want to deal with whatever the legislative issue is. 
Well, how often do water boards come up in legislation? Well, it's special good. districts so in front of the legislature, well, it's half a dozen bills at least a year, a session. But, but when we say a special district, we're not just talking water. Are we talking like taxes, subdivisions? Mm -hmm. We're talking any kind of special um, district? Metro districts. Yeah, metro districts are probably the most followed by water and sanitation districts, but um, Title 32 districts generally. Okay. Um, and Se separate ones like RTD is come, comes up every year. It's, it's under the Title 32 as well. Um, probably this year is probably more than normal. Um, two years ago, it was probably more than normal too because of the Gallagher stuff um, and the fires. So this year, it seems to be the concerns with Metro District developer um, relationships that are picking up statewide. So, so if we waited to hear if something was happening, would we be way behind the curve or would we just be a little behind the curve? You would be significantly behind in that you don't get any granularity from SDA at all. They just tell you what the bill is and sort of what the general effect might be. But you don't get to know who you, who's, who whose who's chest you have to stick your, your finger into and say, don't you dare go to that. But that's the whole thing with the lobbyists. You got to have something in one hand. You're paying for that person to be down there at the Capitol in these people's heads or whatever or voice down there. But, you know, I, I know how these politicians work and they're going to be like, well, what happens if I don't? It's like, no, that's okay. I just got to just go let these people know you're getting ready to do something. But you got to have something to go, you know, you got to have a stick in the hand for that lobbyist. Like, okay, well, Green Mountain is like, 15,000 people, right? There's 15,000 people right. that we represent that would probably not be happy with this. Right. Now, is that enough for a legislator or a state senator to be concerned? I don't know. If you were like House District 23 here with like Chris Kennedy or something like that, maybe that's a concern for him. So we serve 49,000 people. Okay, 49,000 people. They might be concerned. <laughs> well, you know, the, the issue is, you know, when I went looking, um, the SDA sent out uh, their update, and they have all of the bills, and there's probably 20 of them like, right now. Um, and when I went to look at the bills, really everything that I was looking at, it was like groupthink, and you could see because when you think about it, like you're saying, if, if the metro districts, a lot of that comes up. So if any bill comes up about that would pertain to a special district, even if it's um, the labor law change, and there was something, what was that? The sick leave time came up through there. Um, yeah, was that? So when it comes up, they will have the metro districts the, the Builders Association, the Realtors Association, they will have all of those associations, all of that big money that works against us in the campaigns, all of them are registered for XYZ. And even if you're the lone voice standing out there, and that's what I mean, there's no opposition to some of these because nobody hires anybody like, like this. So if, there's nobody standing for the district. If that's what I understand, even though, and I, I know we, we, I know where you're going with this, and I mean, it, it makes sense, but I know that, honestly, I don't think they care. If you've got a sole lobbyist and you've got these other 15, 20 some other counter lobbyists versus one, yeah, you get the information and you're probably embedded in what kind of conversations they're having. But at the end of the day, they probably still don't care. I don't think if I'm on a committee that has oversight of Title 32 issues, I can pretty much guarantee that two names will be dropped to me by lobbyists. Be Bob Murphy and Adam Paul. Right. And they will that representative, Mr. Mrs. X. Miss X will not have any clue at all what Alameda thinks, what we think, what Bear Creek thinks. They don't know that they should care because all they know is that Adam Paul's voice is very loud. 
So if we, want, if we want, if we want to ostensibly know what's going on, we need a person who's there listening. If we want someone to be an irritating little fly in the room and said, well, Adam Paul's voice is not the only voice, then that's what you need is a lobbyist who says, well, maybe not so fast. And, and just whether or not that's worth the expense is another question. What does a lobbyist cost? We don't know. It's an hourly rate usually. Yeah. And I ha we haven't defined any issues okay. to, to look at. So, but I think that there would be some of those things. I just don't think a lot of boards, we don't have a, I mean, even the city council has a legislative committee, but they don't, they're not very active. So this level of board doesn't have it. So if you would have somebody looking out and figuring out what's on there, I think there's potential there for other districts to join later on, or at least get that word out. Um, and it would be worthwhile. You don't have it. By the time you hear about it, like you asked, by the time you hear about it, it's, it's too late, it's gone. I mean, the, the session moves pretty fast. And the initiatives to change the legislation, legislation are written by people who have a vested interest in the change. <laughs> That's right. So exactly. they're already there first. That's right. So if you want to fight. No senator or congressman writes his or you know, representative writes his or her own legislation. <laughs> <laughs> that stopped hundreds of years ago. Yeah. And you have I know because I wrote one for <laughs> U.S. Congress when I was in Washington. Well, see, and you I, I was a lobbyist. I was a Pentagon lobbyist. They called me a Pentagon briefer on Capitol Hill. My job was to go lobby to a bike. So here's a question <laughs> for you. So were you with on your own, with a big firm, a medium-sized firm, or where how how were you placed in the hierarchy? I was an Air Force Colonel. Okay. Your taxpayers paid me to go lobby Congress for more money. Okay. Do you feel that they listen? Absolutely, they listen. That's what I'm asking. They absolutely listen because I was the only voice that made any sense to them. I didn't have an agenda. I was just a guy. You weren't paid. I was a guy bringing them facts. Okay, what if you weren't the guy bringing them facts? How do you think you would have been accepted? Well, you know, that's impossible to know because I was already. <laughs> well, I mean, but oh, it's other lobbyists. Oh, do you well, think I mean, that, you know, I mean, my job was to go in after Lockheed and Boeing had been in and did their thing. And then I'd go in and say, well, yeah, the department thinks that makes a lot of sense, but not at that level. You know, we can do 80% of that kind of funding. It'll be fine. And oh, by the way, you know, your district could benefit by X, Y, and Z. We always do that. Interesting. And we could do something like that, too. If we had somebody in there and saying, we kind of like this, except this we'd like to be able to have this amendment or whatever written language. And that's where that would happen. Yeah, and I'm not saying that Adam Paul's position would be wrong. I'm just saying right. his voice is a voice that a, a senator will stop and say, Chris Kennedy will say, oh, what does Adam think? Yeah. And the Adam's lobbyist will come up and tell him. What does Green Mountain Water think? Anybody in the room? Okay, I guess I don't care. Yeah, you can't, you, yeah. It's, it's a very small cost given the potential information you can gather from the experience if you get the right person. And what I like is a very junior person who just got his own political science degree from DU or Metro and has learned how to demonstrate on the street with a sign. And they can go just be a, an irritant on, you know, at the Capitol. The best lobbyists are the irritants. I did find somebody who seemed the one hungry for business, but he worked in Lakewood with, uh, for the Colorado State Patrol and um, State Farm. He has got State Farm clients. Um, so this would be something new for him, but it would, with that kind of hungry attitude, yeah, would be what you want. Fine. Yeah. So he's already down there. He's already down there. Yeah. So why don't you see what he's, what we're, what we're looking at? Let's okay. get an idea. Let's see what we're looking at. Okay. I don't know. You know, again, it, I'm sure it's something that would depend on what's going on with the legislators, right? That 
there's something going on with Title 32, then it probably their investment or the cost goes up. Right. He's already down there, or she or whoever's doing this. And, you know, if there's nothing Title 32 on the board, then we pay nothing, right? So it's like a, it's some sort of an hourly watchdog. Yeah. And, it, and monitoring just so that you know what's going on and keeping us informed is, is different than actively searching out people in the legislature to sway them. We'll That'll see. be more time. Well, so. Let's see what this 32 is. It 24 hours. Yeah. 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 Probably, I mean, realistically, just monitoring the local government committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Why I will call them. Okay. Yeah. Did you call in, Jerry? I have not. Yeah. I, I pretty, I mean, she reckoned she doesn't have a position. She knows enough people that she yeah. might be able to throw a bone over. I was, I don't know if I have the tact enough to say I want to hire somebody in case no. we don't agree with you. I'll call. I'll call. <laughs> I can, I... You have tact. You can do it. <laughs> No, I, I know. Yeah. It's well, you're a free bird here pretty soon anyway. So. Okay. Another, well, I'm still, another agent. Well, I'm still rejecting my hundred dollars a week. Yeah, you're walking away from some serious money. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's more like ninety two dollars and seventy cents. Eighty five. Well, you guys have some expression. You can see it's broken. You got it. Would you talk about mental health at the beginning? Can you sign me up for? Uh, at least three sessions. Stack. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're going to go we go so in the group therapy with Joe. <laughs> All, right. All right. Are you good on that, Ben? Yes. All right. I'm going to move on to agenda item. New business notifications for next meeting. There are. are we moved most of our legal up. Oh, I'm um, sorry. I thought so we were good. Sorry about that. To Bill's portion. I just have a couple small things. Um, there's on the lobbyist legislative advocacy issue, there's a legislative update next uh, Tuesday at 1 p.m. Uh, April 19th from the SDA. Um, there was a bill introduced five days ago. It's the accountability to taxpayers for special districts bill. It's opposed by the SDA. It's um, It's a whole slew of changes to Title 32 that are um, ostensibly designed to encourage, to increase accountability to, to the taxpayers. I didn't read the bill itself. I only read the summary, so I wouldn't like to read that. Okay. And there are like the the, Yes, it is opposed currently. That's interesting. You see, that's what I'm talking about. But it does sound, sound like, I mean, the SDA is a very, I want to say competent organization. So, I mean, they're put together. So, if there's any bill that comes forward that it looks like, um, like a citizen bill or a new initiative, I mean, my take on things is well, they will know the pitfalls ahead of time. And instead of saying, let's fix it so that you're, the spirit of the law can be maintained, they'll just say no way. But I've only seen that on a couple of things, so I could just be making things up. But well, but it's kind of funny. Special districts and metro districts more or less came about because of when the taxpayers got screwed a few times earlier, and now we're just using new methods to screw yeah, them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, least, honestly, at least with the accountability. Um, so there's the there's also the I forget the title of the bill, but. It's like election security ballot protection measures. Um, I would disagree with that bill for special district clients in particular because just the administrative burdens of are very high. high. Yeah, I mean, you you've got you have forty six thousand people in your district. You've got thirty thousand ballots going out. You don't really. I mean, you're going to increase the cost of your election twofold to comply with that. Right. which doesn't affect the state so much. So the average citizen thinks, oh, this is a great deal because the elections are secure. But every special district across the, across the state that's going to do a paper ballot has to spend an extra $100,000 to get its five directors elected. 
And then they can have recall elections every six oh, months. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we're just happy if anybody votes in these elections. <clears throat> so do you know what the special district do they have stands on that? Yeah. Um, on that, the election update, the ballots went out yesterday. Um, Sue will provide updates to the board as appropriate. Um, I think she emailed me and taught uh, me and Jeff um, to say that. And there was the opportunity emailed, I think only to Jeff, um, but I, all of the directors know about the um, chance to address the Jefferson County Republican Women's Organization. And I will be there April 16th, which is this upcoming Saturday. Yes, that sounds right. So I'm supposed to go stand in there. But the, the other candidates were not invited? No, I think everybody was invited. It was a, it, it wasn't exclusive, but I think they only contacted Jeff directly. But I told uh, Sue about it in case any of the other candidates. I was being transparent, so we, I notified huh? Dylan and stuff, make sure that information. I, I, asked, I asked if it's permissible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was asking for Dylan's permission and doing the legal uh, sanity check. They didn't want to go do something like that, like step on a landmine. So I, I get my, I thought she was going to pull that on. Um, I don't think that she was going to tell them about it. I just wanted her to be aware in case they asked about it. Okay. Um, she's she's not going to give them legal advice, but she can inform people. Were you offended not to be asked? No. So you did <laughs> face your opponent. It's at Denny's. Well, now you're offended. <laughs> <laughs> well, Last time I ate at Denny's, you know who I was with? Yes. Dave Weichman. Yeah, that is one That's of his, his favorite. Yeah. Like three years ago, oh, how long ago was it here? Before yeah. you were elected. I was 2020. 2020. Okay, two years ago. Yep, that's the last time I was at Denny's. You get a grand slam, buddy. I don't know if you could probably get 20 drinks at me, you could probably get me back there. <laughs> Problem is get the 20 drinks at me. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> I have a question on the election. Were you done with that one? Yep. Um, can I, uh, can, in 2020, uh, they allowed, the district allowed all the candidates to put a bio on the website. Do we want to do that again? I don't. I, I you didn't like that. I I just think we're so far into this now. Like I said, I don't anymore. Yeah, you go on the website. I'm the only one without a picture. Oh. <laughs> I'm not pretty and handsome like you guys. So. Well, I don't know. Did did the, did the district do that for when you were running? I know it's late, but for a lot of people, they just get their for special district elections. A lot of people don't know anything, and you're happy to get candidates. So. I, I thought that was a nice feature. That's a balancing act. I have yet to see anything on next door. Mm -hmm. um, but it's surprising that's... that there's not been banter. No, I think it's coming. I think mm -hmm. there is. A... Remember my 48 hour warning. I said yeah, I would expect something. Yeah. Yeah. That'll yeah. Probably be um, I mean, I, I think it's a worthwhile thing to do. To put it on the website? Yeah. Yeah. That way, when people, if people go to the website, they recognize that we have a board president and he's running for re-election. Yeah. How would they know that otherwise from the ballot? You don't. They don't. Yeah. It's not electioneering. I'm just saying, you know, it helps inform the public. I don't know where you go look for that information other than on the website. No, the, the candidates could have the, the candidates could pay for one, but I not I was the only one who paid for it in my in, in 2020. I had a website and nobody else did, but at least everybody got a little bio on the district website and you could see something about everybody who was running. Yeah. Because I'm okay with that as long as everybody, all the candidates want to do it. I don't, I don't I mean, care. As long as you issue the invitation, mm -hmm. they, you know, then it's all fair to everybody. But in the not, I mean, this is, I know this is a crazy year. It's just a is nice it? thing, but. Um, <laughs> In a non-crazy time, that's just that's probably the best place to get information if it's just the 300 words everybody can do it or not. You would do the motion to do that? Um, I don't think so. No, I mean that's I don't think so either. That's pretty generous, pretty low level. Yeah, you take a note of 18 years. Well, I'll see. So 
it's always been run. And historically, my recollection has been that we've always placed them on the ballot order. So now no, that's, that's, that's just the only fair way to do it for that ballot order. So yeah. Yeah. So I think just instruction to staff to create that. Or um probably email Sue and ask her to ask her to contact the candidates with that. Why don't we just do that? So Jeff, can you good Jeff, can you send an email to Sue Blair sending out an email to all the candidates requesting a 300, no more than 300 word limit? I think that's a good number. I want to say three to five hundred previously. Some years it was it was pretty mailer accepted like three pages. Two, two three page like Wow. Let's say wow. 300. Let's go with the 300, 300 word with the picture yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. option. If you want to send a picture in a 300 word bio and then submit that to Sue, who would then submit that to you, Jeff, and then the staff can put it on the website. So can I just drop a little Absolutely. thing? I think it would be great. We did a headshots for a board a couple of years ago on district manager. I always thought it was really good on the website. Um, and I kind of missed that opportunity a couple of times, COVID, different things. I think we just really, you know, we're redesigning the website here. It's going to be refreshed this summer. And that's it. Really expected. Just leave it up to the all who are interested in it. Sure. Yeah, but it was, we, we had a plug that was really affordable. It's great. It's just nice to have like, Puts a face to yeah, the so action. This yeah. is the person on the waterboard that Jeff's been talking a lot about. Yeah, we want to put a face out there. Yes, yeah, so when they see us on the street. I've already got headshots. There's, there's just, <laughs> this Easter Island head right here is bulletproof. <laughs> you, you can't damage which doesn't exist. <laughs> Fire away. All right. When is the next meeting? The May thirty days. Um, not going to say it. I want to May nine. So, yeah. Ten. The tenth. Yeah. Um. Right. So the ethics complaint. I submitted that and I submitted it online. They call you to talk about it. The guy I talked to requested that I write him a formal letter and include the supporting documentation. I drafted that letter and then the board was sued. So I slightly revised it to add the complaint. I sent that off. Um, the Office of Attorney Regulation Council um, sent a letter uh, copying me yesterday to Ms. Timmons uh, seeking her response to the complaint. She's got 21 days to respond to it unless she requests additional time. And uh, I will receive a copy of her response. I then uh, call it I will have seven days after that to reply if necessary. So I'll, I'll be on alert for that and I'll pass along whatever response I receive to you all. And final issue that I have is that the auditor reached out to me for the um, annual legal financial risk assessment letter. I prepared that and responded to them. I sent a copy to Jeff for his records also. So you know what the risks to the district are. We do not have meritorious defenses. We have insurance counsel, which is even better. <laughs> uh, it, it, um, it goes through December 31st. So the current, current litigation, I don't think I think I sent the letter in before that happened, so that'll show up on next year's letter. Thanks. Any other comments? No appeals update? Well, yeah, I guess um, I did send an email today. Um, Scott requested an additional three week extension of time and received it. So the answer brief is going to be due May 5th. Okay. So he'll, um, he'll follow up. Probably through me. Special meeting.
Probably, yeah. There would probably be a special meeting towards the end of the month. Um, they'll circulate the draft, and then if you want to talk about it, it'd be appropriate to call a special meeting. Okay. All right. How is that with with all of the time? Is it are we? Would it help? Would it help more than it would hurt to? You are right now just making an appearance. Do we need to activate, let you do something else on that case? On the appeal. On the appeal. Um, I don't think that it would. I don't think that there would be a time or money or strategic benefit to me taking a more active role in that. Um, Scott and I talk about it, so we um, we are strategizing. So my hands are a little bit off. But he's the direction. Okay. Uh, another kind of legal question um, on, again on the take liner. That other email that I thought was a sales call mm -hmm. with somebody. Is, is that something we need to do anything with right now? I don't think so. No. Uh, did you meet with him? Talk to him? I didn't talk to him. No, I didn't talk to him. Yeah. Yet. Somebody contacted us that he knew something about the about the liner I, that was pertinent to our case here. Yeah, it seemed um, it read to me like a solicitation more than a pure altruistic offer for help. <laughs> and but if it is a pure altruistic offer to help, um, I don't think we're at the point where we need that yet. I think I think we're at the point where. We make the demand that they compensate the district, and then if they refuse, we get into a fight where that might be helpful. Um, same with the follow up uh, analysis report. Okay. Yeah, you'll you'll see the correlation of email going back and forth between the district manager I with Kablaco is point Kablaco does in the email you'll see a worded they they're kind of hinting towards Sherman Williams um, chemical structure to blame in that. You'll, you'll see it when, <laughs> you'll see it when I send you the email because they're, they're defending the application was correct. It was the, possibly the product. So, but you'll, I'll forward you all that. Good luck. Good luck with that. Good luck, yeah. yeah. There were lawyers will rain down on them like mm -hmm. but crazy. Yeah, but yeah, you'll see, yeah. They can, yeah, they can have that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sir right. Williams can't afford to let that position stand. Nope. No. All right. Any further legal uh, questions? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> you're, just getting, you're just getting warmed up, every, aren't you? No, I'm not. Just it's the kidding. Karen hour. <laughs> <laughs> but every time you ask, I have to say yes. Um, legal, you asked about um, Henderson and Dr. Do you want to follow up on that? Do we need to talk about that? I want to look into that. Okay. Um, I, the district does have an indemnification uh, obligation under the Governmental Immunity Act that extends to agents. I don't know that. I don't know that this falls into that. So I'll let you know. Okay. I have it starred next to my task items. Very nice. Mm -hmm. okay. I do the work. No, I still have a list, but not on. The I know. List. I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for legal. Stars. That's all I have. Stars. <laughs> what I use. We need some colors on it. Yeah. All right. All right. Good turn. Yeah. All right. So uh, the last agenda item: new business notifications for next board meeting. Are there anything put on for the next board meeting? Well, with the appeals, I guess we'll just decide that one. When it's a TBD. Yeah. TBD. Yeah. Any any director can call a special meeting by. You know, it's just every two hours as it stands. I won't have it in the business for the main meeting. I have to be sober from now on. Is the mill still lifted? <laughs> Not yet. Not no, yet. no, 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 no. <laughs> there are emojis circling him as we speak. <laughs> I don't like this module. I really don't. I'm sorry, Karen. Keep going. I have a question. Um, you may remember, probably not, last December, 
brought us a request from the city of Lakewood uh, Heritage Center that we provide a history oh. of the district. And I contacted him a little while later and nobody else had picked up on it. So, so I kind of followed up with that a little bit and found former director Kenneth Corniger, who remembers you very fondly, Jesse. Um, he put together uh, a history for us. It was just a little bit, but by that time, Lakewood had filled in the spot. And, and then we, I was going to invite him to a meeting to give it, but then we were doing recall and it was a mess and everything's a mess. My question to you is if you are interested in this, have inviting him to a meeting, or that could be something that I could just ask him, right? He said he just had a couple paragraphs. Um, but he was with the district for 30 years and his brother also served on the district. So that may be something I could just ask him to write up and put in a newsletter since we're doing newsletters. They're twins, I, I know the Corman Burgers, um, yeah. Any interest in that history appearing any place? Well, that's probably a good idea, newsletter, put it on the website. Nice on the website, yeah. Okay, do you want to invite him to a meeting or just tell, I'll just tell him to do that and we can publish it. Why don't we start with, having him do it and we probably have to have Dylan look at it. Uh, okay. We do need to vet stuff if it's going to go on the website. Okay. We've also had some just general requests of people, I think I forwarded something to Jesse where people said, can you just put something on the website that just speaks more about the district? So maybe this would kind of- That's a good that. start. Yeah. Okay. I will talk to him again. Um, other thing I had was to ask, I see that the office was, looks like it's reopened. Yes. To the public. Um, I think that's great. That is wonderful. Thank you very much. However, <laughs> things, things have changed a little while. I wondered if anybody was interested or at least giving you a nod to the fact that we haven't had public coming into the office for a couple of years, probably habits have changed. Do you want to think about decreasing the office hours open for the public so that the staff who is working at home or can do anything or just have it. I don't know if that's if that's necessary. Um, I don't know if that's something that we need to talk about or if that's, if you, maybe my question is evaluate that. And if you need anything from us and we need to make a, if you would recommend that we decrease the office hours that, you let us know and if we need to decide that. I don't know if that's written in bylaws or if that's anything we need to do. It's manager. But yeah, yeah. so I think that would be I, manager. I would look at that. Sure. About you. Yeah, we're good. I mean, everybody's everybody's coming to work. Well, yeah. Well, I guess that's not my question. But the question is you still have to come to work. But if you, <laughs> yeah, everybody's coming to work. You have, well. been, you have been coming to work, but sometimes, you know. Do you mean more than preview, just letting staff do their like daily tasks or? Yeah, so for, I don't know if you always need them to be here. I mean, that would be up to you. I don't know if the customer, same customer service. I know you had a lot of rotation going on before. Yeah, but that's, yeah they, they cover it. They cover each other really well. Okay. That was it. Thank you very much. Going once? No, yep. Going two, twice? Two. I, I, I popped it in there. I don't know. <laughs> Um, somebody else asked ah, about, um, I triggered it. That, tell me, anybody remember what the problem was on the tank that's up on Green Mountain? There's a road that goes straight yeah, up. It's an there's, erosion problem. There's erosion problem. Issue, yes. no. Somebody asked me about that again. It's City of Lakewood. It's City of Lakewood. It's, Lake it's their, Lake right? it's okay. their that was all part. It is not ours. We had reached out to City of Lakewood and I, um, we talked about some things they could do, but once again, it's like the yeah. the water level down there in our exposition. All we can do is re make recommendations. We did. City of Lakewood has not chose anything on the erosion issue up on that. They need to direct their questions not to Green Mountain. It is City of Lakewood's park. That was my remembers too. I just I wanted to make sure. That's how was that for a recall? It's good. Yeah, good. I don't Thank want you. any second chances this next time. Okay. I always give Ken a second chance. All right. Thursday. Thursday. Fourth season. 
This is about the time she really starts starts kicking. Apparently, she's a night owl. She, no, she, <laughs> she she gets she processes stuff. And you kind of gotta let it. I know. For a while. She gets going. Yeah, she's got thirty four minutes left in the hour. Ooh, I think we did really well considering we had all the uh, the additional legal stuff tonight. So I think this is actually pretty good. Good job. So, um, I'm just going to close with Alex. Thank you so much for yeah. four years. Yeah, seriously, you're welcome. And Dave, thank, thank, you, thank you, you so much for jumping in when you did. It was great. It was not a, uh, being able to say I filled Adrian Hannigan's chair. <laughs> well, that was a. Uh, it was nice. It was a very contentious time, and and, uh, and and you guys have been just the opposite of contentious. I mean, it's it's this is very collegial, and that is respectful. Come back in May. Well, I'm going to be over there in May. I'm, I'll be back for a couple of months just to harass you. Throw darts, yeah. yeah. Like lawn darts? <laughs> I'm killing you, aren't I? All right. I'm dead on me. It's a private joke, and he is dying really slow right now. So, all right. Um, if there's no new business or nothing to put on the next thing, I motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All right. I'm just going to call the vote. Uh, all in favor of adjourning the meeting, say aye. 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 We have five ayes. Alex, staff, Sam, thank you. Jesse, thank you. Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you. Dave. Dylan, thank you. Sam and Jesse, thank you for your patience. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Gary. Wish I was ever sticking around.